Many Mercedes fans have been left questioning what went wrong this year. Did they just test the wrong concepts? Were there results from aerodynamic testing off just like last year? Or was it just a misjudgment by higher management? Luckily for us, Mercedes have finally revealed what went wrong with the design process of the W14, and it's pretty revealing to say the least. Mercedes Chief Technical Officer Mike Elliott stated that the team's primary problem was that they slipped into a trap of the 2022 regulations by driving too close to the ground. The switch to ground effect aerodynamics in 2022 was intended to make cars easier to follow, but a disadvantage was discovered when the car's performance was maximized by being too close to the ground. With it came the porpoising phenomena that afflicted Mercedes last season. The bouncing that happened because of the car's floor effectively being pushed towards the track's surface at high speed when downforce was created. Mercedes technical boss acknowledges the team slipped into a trap with the 2022 rules. This has been the huge mistake that has resulted in poor performances over the last 18 months. Elliott detailed the differences between the current cars and their predecessors in how difficult a balance it is to find when discussing the conflict teams are having between running their cars low to the ground, which theoretically offers more performance, or with a higher ride height, which offers the drivers more confidence. He admitted that Mercedes perhaps worked too hard to optimize performance by positioning the troubled W13 too near to the track surface. I think if you were to go back to the old regulations, you could put the car where you wanted to put it, Elliot explained to the media. You add big travel in the suspension, which allows you to shake the balance a bit better through the corners. You weren't limited by stiffness. You could sort of chase where the aerodynamic performance is in the regulations. For these cars, aerodynamically you want to run close to the ground, and so if you run them close to the ground, you have to run them stiff. And that's one of the traps we fell into last year, if we're honest. So I think there's always going to be that balance you have on this set of regulations. When you've got cars that want to run really close to the ground, how do you get that balance right? With Formula 1's budget cap and aerodynamic testing regulations, or ATRs, also in play for the team, the days of unrestricted wind tunnel runs for those with more money are past. Mercedes' choice not to fully utilize the best concepts of the regulations established last season has helped this year to reduce the overall pace disadvantage to Red Bull compared to 2022 but their 2021 championship rivals are still by far and away the dominating power in the sport at the present. In terms of how teams prepare a car philosophy, Elliott acknowledged that teams must stay in their lanes to some extent once they have decided on the path they want to take with a car, but Mercedes believes the learning they did in 2023 has put them in a good position to progress over the winter with next season's challenger. I think that the real difficulty is if you look at the aero testing restrictions, You've got so limited number of runs, you've got to pick a direction and go for it, Elliot said. And it's really hard to know if you go down the route of saying, I want to develop a car for high ride heights or one for low ride heights, and I want to be able to cover all my bases. Suddenly, you'd be doing three wind tunnel runs a week on each one and going nowhere. So you have to sort of pick a direction and go in it, and as you learn, you can tweak that direction and move it slightly. I like to think we've sort of gotten ourselves into the right place for the winter. At least they seem to be on the right path for next year. But this can't be said about previous years, because much has been said about Mercedes Zero Side Pods idea, which debuted in early 2022, with most saying it was a flop. The team agreed to maintain it in 2023, but following a bad result in the season's opening race in Bahrain, they declared they were going to pick an alternative development path. But why would they even stay with this concept? Why were they still sucked into this trap, as Elliot calls it? The poor performance in Bahrain resulted in the introduction of Mercedes' first major upgrade of 2023 in Monaco. The addition of more traditional side pods was one of the most apparent aspects of the revised W14. Mike Elliott, the team's chief technical officer, now explains why they opted to remain with the original trapped plan at the start of 2023. Over the winter, we looked at various different concepts of bodywork and didn't find a solution that was better than the one we had," Elliot said. I think with what we've done now, we've clearly not jumped completely to where they are or to where anybody else is. What we've tried to do is take what we've got and adapt it. Therefore, you don't sort of take the same hit, and hopefully with time it evolves and we'll end up in a better place. I think when we bought the first version, it was pretty much a level change. It wasn't something that brought lots of extra performance but there were opportunities to look at something different. We've sort of moved forward. We're always evolving, constantly trying to bring more performance. So this is a little bit more. 
The next version will bring us a little bit more, and hopefully we'll keep developing over the winter. Finally, the Monaco update helped Mercedes increase the performance of the W14. You question everything. You question whether you've got the right fundamental philosophies. You question whether you've got the right processes in the way you're looking at the data. You'd like to think there's some silver bullet you could find, or something that's wrong that you can fix. But I think, generally speaking, it's all about hard work. If you look at where we are performance-wise, I think Aston made a good step over the winter, but we've got ourselves in a decent position. Unfortunately, we've seen McLaren also make a big step. I think you have to sort of look at that and say, on the one hand, it's disappointing for us, but on the other hand, it shows us that our opportunities to make good steps, Elliot concluded. There sure are opportunities for Mercedes next year. But what's astonishing is that Mercedes drove a full year with a flop design, saw nine other competitors do it different. And still, you couldn't think of a concept that would improve their aerodynamic base? This has been one of the major reasons that Mercedes overhauled their design department earlier this year. What are your thoughts on Mercedes' explanation? Do you think they could have stopped themselves from making this mistake last year? In the end, they eventually found an answer to their big problem. Maybe it was too late for this year, but they have created a good platform for next year. And that's exactly what they're going to be focusing on after the summer break. Mercedes will devote more resources to development in 2024, according to Toto Wolf, who explains that additional improvements to the W14 would mostly come from setup optimization. Although Mercedes executives stress that their new development strategy extends beyond their side pods, the shift to a more traditional design indicated a significant shift in the team's approach. Earlier in the year, James Allison was called upon to correct the issue, taking over as technical director and replacing Mike Elliott. Time will tell whether this decision pays off, but at least James Allison now knows what isn't working and isn't making the same mistakes Elliott did. For this year, it was unavoidable that Mercedes would have to make short-term concessions after adopting to a new philosophy. As a result, Red Bull's sustained domination with the RB19 does not yet spell the end of the German constructor's decision. With more leeway to undertake large-scale adjustments to the W15, next year will offer a clearer picture of the trajectory at Brackley. Toto Wolff explained the decision to shift attention to next year in an interview. The sales are set for 2024 now. We still have some updates to come with the W14, but I find switching focus to next year good, he said. Because there is so much we can optimize on the current car, without looking too much into upgrades. Let's see how we can get into more of a sweet spot while gaining lots of understanding for next year. The more learnings we can find, the better placed we'll be for 2024 and beyond. Although building a good basis for next year is the aim, making the most of the final 10 rounds of this season is crucial. But Mercedes seem to think that the car setup configurations will be enough to squeeze every bit of performance out of the remaining races. Will this be the case? Will we see Mercedes win a race this year? What about next year? What are your expectations? Let us know in the comments down below.